Hip hip, tally ho, how's your father? Apples and pears, dog and bone. See you down the rubber dub dub. <laughs> We're in Bethnal Green today, and it's called Bethnal Green because it used to be called Blithen Hall, which meant happy corner. Then over the years, it got corrupted to become Bethnal Green. Now, Bethnal Green Station, just over here, was the location of the biggest loss of civilian life in the whole of the Second World War in, in London. There was an air raid, and the sirens went, um, and everyone came running down to the shelter. And actually, back then it wasn't a tube station. They, they, they were just extending the central line. They'd built the tunnels and the station, but they hadn't laid down the tracks yet. So everyone came running down to the tube station, and because it was a blackout, it was, uh, it was very dark. And uh, one poor lady ended up falling down with her child, and uh, everyone else just tumbled down the stairs after her, and 173 people lost their lives. And it's commemorated here by this new monument here called the Stairway to Heaven. Churchill tried to cover it up because if the Germans found out about it, it would encourage more bombing. He had also earlier claimed that England wasn't panicking. That's why he covered it up until after the war. He didn't want anyone to know that uh, we were actually panicking. An old man went a begging in Bethnal Green With a white stick and a white dog for no sight had he How you doing? Hey, I'm all, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be bad, but over here is Bethnal Green Library. That This actually used to be a, a mental asylum. Three people to a bed, um, people would have to sleep naked, they'd be chained to the wall. And, and this park, uh, ever since, has been known as Balmy Park. So being balmy means being mad. And you know where they get the word balmy from? Hotel. It's from the froth that formed on the top of fermenting malt liquors. Is that what it's called? But, Balmy froth. Yeah, so a mad person having a frothy top, like a, a crazy person. Is that the blind beggar, do you reckon? And I am that famous for pretty Bessie, the blind beggar's daughter of Bethnal Green. The blind beggar of Bethnal Green, he was um, Henry de Monford, who was a rich landowner, like a wealthy baron. Anyway, he lost his eyesight in the Battle of Evesham, wherever that was, Robin Hood sort of time. And anyway, because he didn't want people to go chasing after his daughter on account of her money, he decided to wander around the streets of Bethnal Green, begging. And later on, the borough of Bethnal Green decided to incorporate it into their coat of arms. They used to do hangings there. You know, London used to have lots of different execution grounds. It wasn't just Tyburn Gallows. They called it the Bloody Code. By the year 1810, there were 250 offences that you could be hanged for. Well, basically, if you stole anything amounting to more than about 30 quid in today's money, then you could be hanged. But also, stealing from a rabbit warren. Going out at night with a blackened face, apparently was also a hangable offence. So if you're a chimney sweep, you're in deep trouble. They see what? The other one is, if you spent more than 30 days in the company of a gypsy, you could also be hanged. 29 days, no problem. But uh, 30 days, yeah. But, um, but it was right here, actually, that um, the, the two who got hanged here were John Verline and John Doyle. They were silk weavers. I think they were annoyed about uh, cheap imports of silk. And so anyway, there was a big riot and a this big uproar, and then they put up a gallows right here outside the Salmon and Ball pub and hanged them. Now my father said if you're pretty and poor, the men take the Apparently, I'm supposed to tell everybody to subscribe to my Instagram. So if I had as many Instagram followers as, as YouTube followers, I'd, I'd, I'd be doing well. It's the little red button underneath. <laughs> yes, so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and to my Instagram channel, at Jules Guides. <laughs> this is the Victoria and Albert Museum of Childhood. In 1852, the Victoria and Albert Museum was first started up. No, it was first in Somerset House to house some of the exhibits from the Great Exhibition. Then they put some of it into these corrugated iron sheds, which became known as the Brompton Boilers, and they were very ugly. And uh, in the 1860s, they were moved here, and then uh, it turned into the Museum of Childhood. Let's go take a look inside. But I'm just a poor girl and not a rich queen. I'm just a blind beggar's daughter from Bethnal Green. that exact one. That's exactly the one that we used to have. 
my sister had the witch. That's over there, by the way, that's uh, York Hall. It started out as a uh, Turkish bars and stuff like that, but then it became known as the home of British boxing. I think you should do this bit in a Cockney accent, Jules, because they're all dead hard round here. Yeah, so lots of uh, famous boxers started their careers here, like uh, Lennox Lewis fought here, Joe Calzuggi, David Hay fought here. Yeah, home of, even that Mendoza the Jew bloke. I didn't... <laughs> I didn't know they had Australians living down in Bethnal Green, Jim. It's a jolly holiday with Mary. This is Paradise Road. Is it? Have you ever heard of that song on Mother's Curly's Doorstep down Paradise Road? Oh, I, I'm Mother Curly's Doorstep. Paradise Road. On Paradise Road. Paradise Road. Excellent. Which one? Do you know that song? Oh, Mother Curly's doorstep on Paradise Row. I think I must know it from Tom Caroline's Cockney sing-along. So Tom was talking about how he wants to do um, songs around London of all the places that he sings about. So this can be one of them. Look who it is. It's Simon. Hello, what Greetings. Geese, what are you doing down in your stem, mate? Isn't it? Geese, what are you doing down here, Geese? nice sort of listed buildings it's got this beautiful old uh, 1940s interior and it's uh, been here since 1900. Hello young man you're Hello. painting beautifully with our primrose yellow vitrolite facade. <laughs> Thank you very you much. Do. Yeah. Yeah. You're right they do match. Look yeah. at the colours and that's gorgeous isn't it? I, I, I bought this jacket especially. I should hope so. <laughs> been in our family for well over 100 years my grandparents, Priamo and Ellie, they named me the E and E Pellici, started it over 100 years ago. And my father was one of eight children to be born upstairs. He was born upstairs in 1925. Wow. Lost my dad 10 years ago, but now my brother, myself, and my lovely mum, who's almost 79, still cooking every day in the kitchen. So yeah, the interior's gorgeous. Been given grade two listing now by English Heritage, but it was done in the early 1940s. Someone told me that the craze used to come back. They used to sit here every morning. Mummy hmm. actually was in the kitchen, used to cook them breakfast every morning. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to eat something? Are you going to eat something? Uh, Hello there, yeah, all right. Buongiorno. Thanks. Buongiorno. Come on, do a bit of Italian, Julian. Come on, Giuliano. Oh, Come on, Giuliano. Oh, Italiano. Bravo, Giuliano. <laughs> well, I could see you, Giuliano. One of the old gondolas down in there, eh? singing just one cornetto. Give it to me. <laughs> That wasn't the look I was going for, but he's got a point. I think he has got a point, though. <laughs> Gab, can I get um, some Ribena, please, and two sausages, chips and beans? Thank you very much. What happened to that jam roll with Calm down, love. I'm doing the filming over here, do you know what I mean? What happened to that jam roll with Polly for all this? It's like, it's like being in Italy, but everyone's speaking in English. Get a shouting the whole time. In the video, are you regular, madam? Uh, certainly oh. am. Twice a day, sir, Twice she said, yes. Twice a day, yes. oh. if I'm lucky. <laughs> oh, what's that? Bread pudding? Yeah. This is for you, sir. Oh, wow. It's a traditional Absolutely Italian dish. Delicious. Bread pudding. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll love this. My mum made this this morning. It's the best bread pudding, bread pudding you'll ever eat anywhere. Fabulous. Have you tried it, bread pudding? I have, it's absolutely lovely. Oh, thank, thank you, madam. Hey, thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Giuliano. Highly recommended this place. Have a lovely day. Ci vediamo. Ritorno a presto, come and see us again. Certo, certo. That was the most excellent, most excellent and highly recommended place. And each of them struck their sword into me, the blind beggar's daughter of Bethnal Green. I just off Bethnal Green Road here, down Derbyshire Street is Oxford House. In 1884, the students from uh, Keble College, Oxford, used to come down here and live amongst the poor and give lessons. They used to live upstairs, and uh, now it's a community centre. Bands and music and performances, all sorts, right opposite Weaver's Fields. It's rather nice around here, I like it. This bathhouse is a Repton Boxing Club. It's actually where Ray Winston used to fight. He won 80 fights here, Ray Winston. Also the craze. Um, it was established by Repton School, the posh school, which is in Derbyshire. They opened up and established Repton Boxing Club for East End boys. West End girls. <laughs>
The Crays, by the way, that I keep mentioning, were notorious gangsters. Ronald and Reggie Cray in the 1960s. Um, well, they only shot their own and killed their own and uh, had trouble with their own. So they sort of well, they only shot their own, eh? Yeah, yeah, geese, right. All right, all right. They only shot their own. They only killed their own. And that makes love, them lovable roads. My, 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 my lovely people. But uh, actually, famously, the Crays were the last people to be incarcerated in the Tower of London because they refused to do their military service. Well, Repton was um, actually the school where Roald Dahl went. Have you read Boy by Roald Dahl? Anyway, he, he wrote about some unhappy times he had there so as a result of fagging. Do you have, who did you used to fag for, Simon? Do you, do you have fagging at your school? <laughs> Do you know what fagging is? What is it? Fag you, know, well, you wouldn't know this unless you went to a posh school, but fagging was this thing where you, you'd, have to, you'd be basically like a, a slave. A younger boys would be a kind of slave, a servant to the older prefects at the school. Uh, we didn't actually have it at my school. Um, he also, he, but he, no, we didn't. We did, I, was a pre I was a prefect, though. I did manage to issue punishments. My head of house said to me, look, you have to give more punishments out, Julian. So I set one kid a punishment. I said, all right, write an essay about um, standing on your head in a bucket of feces in hell for eternity. Right, 200 words. <laughs> that was his thing. And the other one was, why did God give men nipples? Then came a night, fell pity on me. I love you, my darling, my pretty Bessie. So I'll probably have to return down here, but this pub here, is uh, the Carpenter's Arms. That's the one that the Crays bought for their mum in 1967. Their mum, Violet, was her name. And, uh, and they actually attended this school, William Davis Primary School. I think they always had a different name in those days. If you'll be my wife, I will marry thee, the blind beggar's daughter of Bethnal Green. So we're now at the top of Brick Lane where there's a fantastic market on the Sunday, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that today. I'll have to come back and do that another time. But it just happens to be on the way to Woodsier Street, which I want to talk about. What is that language underneath? Is that Bengali? What, what, what language is that? Hindustan? I don't even know. Look at that, Simon. Look at that, Look at that building up there. Look. Isn't that an amazing kind of Dickensian... It's big proper work, work now, this is an excellent old example of one of the first social housing developments in London, actually. These are called Albert Cottages. See, they haven't got any entrances on the main road. You have to enter via this doorway here. And you go, and they were originally, for the artisans in the East End, they were put up by the Metropolitan Association for the Improvement of Dwellings for the Industrious Classes. <laughs> well, it's like <laughs> yeah, it's so difficult. The Victorians have these ridiculous names. But this is Albert Cottages, and just beyond there is Victoria Cottages. Um, and so they would typically house two families, one upstairs and one downstairs. And these used to be all over London. But uh, a lot of the ones around here got bombed and uh, they removed and what have you. And uh, I love how they've now got satellite dishes outside <laughs> them. It's so good. <laughs> It's a bit of a walk, but I think it probably makes sense if we finish at the Blind Beggar. This delightful street is Valence Road, and it's uh, actually where the Crays lived when they were young. Uh, it's down there. I would show it to you, but I think it's been knocked down. I tried to find it earlier, but there's no point because it's just been turned into a big block now. And suddenly my father said millions of gold coins had hit. Seems logical to finish here because this is where George Cornell was shot by Ronnie Cray. And I think this was one of the one of the crimes that led to him being arrested in the end. Is that right? That's right. Harry George Cornell called Ronnie Cray a fat puff. And uh, he didn't like that, understandably. So he was actually gay, wasn't he? One of the yeah. Cray Trends was gay and he, so he took umbrage at this and uh, walked into the pub here where George Cornell was having a drink at the bar and he shot him at point blank range. And I think that led to their downfall and demise. For he was no beggar but rich as can be Henry de Montfort of Bethnal Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my videos don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, if you want to find out more about me you can head over to my website jewelsguides.com where you can even hire me for a guided tour if you like and uh, also don't forget to subscribe to my 
Instagram feed. I've got to start telling people to do that. Anyway, cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>